But at Loomis Learning, uh, we do know that libraries are a critical resource in increasing academic achievement. We are very excited to present the seven ways that libraries can impact student learning outcomes. Now, some of this information you may already know, but I'm sure you get value from this information already. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce my co-moderator. Her name is Tammy Gaines. And Tammy is the Director of Business Development for Loomis Learning. She's been helping schools to succeed for over 15 years through the professional development of school leaders and teachers. And she's also taught and trained in a variety of settings, including schools, not-for-profits, and corporations. And Tammy is, asked, is tasked with bringing Lomas, Lomas's test prep and intervention solutions to both libraries and schools all over the country. But before I pass this on to uh, Tammy, just got to tell you uh, some of our housekeeping tasks. Uh, during her particular presentation, all of you will be mooted, but, but if you uh, have a question, you see your chat box down at the right, in the bottom right, just go ahead and put some in there, and we'll make sure we get everything um, uh, answered. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll have a few minutes for question and answer. Tammy and I will answer as many questions as possible. But anyway, for right now, please welcome Tammy Gaines. Tammy, take it away. Hey, thanks so much, Billy. Thanks for the um, great intro, and thank you to you all for taking time out to jump on this webinar. Um, I'm encouraged because we clearly have a, a shared mission, which is repositioning libraries as, as a learning resource and as an extension of uh, the classroom. And that's what we're gonna talk to you about today. We're gonna talk to you about the seven, the seven ways that libraries can impact student learning outcomes. So the first way that you can impact student outcomes is by reimagining the role of the library in student achievement. But as many of you know, the first library uh, was introduced in approximately 2600 BC. And the role of the original library was really to catalog resources, whether they were tablets or scrolls or bound books. Um, it really just served as a locus of knowledge. Today, with the digitization of content and the proliferance of the internet, information is no longer confined to printed materials accessible only in a single physical location. Libraries are reinventing themselves as content becomes more accessible online. And the library becomes less about housing tomes and more about connecting learners and constructing knowledge. So there's a library uh, up in Ashburnham, Massachusetts, which is called Cushing Academy. And in 2009, they announced its plans to become a bookless library. So today they have a database of millions of digital resources that far superseded their 20,000 volume collection of books and they replaced the circulation desk with a cafe. Um, and it was interesting because not only did the transition change the way students consume content, but it also changed the way how the library utilized space. So rather than maintaining a quiet location for studying, the library created an environment for collaboration and knowledge co-construction. And I think if we all begin to look at the library that way and start to project that message to parents and students and teachers, we're going to be able to reposition a library as a critical learning resource. The number second way, uh, and my aunt is a librarian at Gramlin State University, and she's my first uh, thought process that I had from a librarian standpoint. She's been there for 28 years, but she would try to increase traffic in the library because she tried a bunch of different creative ways, like she would have a jazz night where she'd bring in the local jazz person on Wednesday nights, and then she tried to get kids, so she would bring in uh, a free ice cream night on Thursday. And then uh, once a month, she'd bring in an author that she had written to to come in and read to uh, some of the people and also to, uh, to show their book work off. And then also what I really like is that Gremlin State University is known for their, their football players that have come out. So she'd bring in a football player once a month to read to the kids, and that went over pretty big. But... To number two is to recognize that we are educating the digital native. Now we're in the age of the 21st century learner, so the age of the digital native. Originally it was coined by a gentleman named Mark Pritsky, and this phrase is now regularly used in the school system to describe those students 
who've been born into the digital generation. Now, although every student, as you know, coming into the classroom doesn't have the same access to technology, but they each come to a school with significantly more knowledge about technology than the teachers. Now, the adults who are charged with teaching these students are referred to as digital immigrants. Certainly, most of the adults are familiar with technology, but they have had to take the time to learn how to use it personally and how to try it up to allow it in the particular classrooms. Now, schools are embracing the idea of technology more than ever before, working to safely include social media, web 2.0 applications, and a variety of other tools. Many are, uh, schools are including the iPad initiatives and taking other steps to embrace the technological age of learning. My daughter, who's a junior, wanted to be a junior year in high school, she has what they call a Chromebook, and we rent it from the school every year because they, because more of the learning is going digital. So if I don't pay for the insurance, like I didn't do last year, I have to pay for the whole thing. So I definitely recognize that educating the digital native person. Now, as we imagine, reimagine the role of the library in creating learning opportunities, how can we make libraries digitally relevant? And we acknowledge that we are educating technologically adept students it only makes sense to ensure that your library is digitally relevant. Now, having Wi-Fi available, now that's a given. This means providing electronic resources that, that have the ability to continue strengthening student learning outside of school hours when they go home for, for their homework and different things and when they're studying through educational databases. And as you know, they, are, they also have videos, podcasts, eBooks, and audio, audio books that provide learning support. Making libraries digitally safe Ensure that their privacy is protected even through your social, your service providers. And you should always communicate with your community from a social media and video standpoint. And recognizing that your audience has different needs, you'd require realigning how you allocate your current resources. Now, how can we engage students early? I have a son that's 10 years of age, and he's been dealing with the computer since he's two. He surpassed me when I was five, but that didn't take much help to do that. But we need to recognize that the young people today need to combine play and learning while in library. Like I, when I take my son to an educational thing, I have to include a fun outing also with his learning. So I try to uh, be creative with that aspect of it. Uh, we need to engage multiple senses and explore a range of learning styles. And consider programs that provide an early introduction to electronic resources. I like the part about electronic storybooks because kids can come in there where they can listen while looking at pictures, especially if they're at a young age, or small group teaching sessions that show kids how to access games and programs online. And as soon as my son began to access the programs and games online, he's using even my cell phone to do that. And also consider providing workshops for parents and caregivers who may not be as familiar with current technology. I even met a, an elder lady who was in her 70s just the other day, and she told me uh, in the beginning she was not inter interested in technology, but they asked her to volunteer, and she had to use the computer. So she went back to her local library to learn how to use the computer. But if we start them early, we'll create lifetime learners. The fifth way that libraries can impact student learning outcomes is by involving the entire community. And you know, it used to be that public libraries were the core of the community. Um, but given all the distractions, whether it's social media or just you know more activities for people to do, I think we've gotten away from that. But I know that by aggregating information for patrons, libraries can become a one-stop shop for personal and educational resources. Um, so there's social activities that you could do to bring the community together in your library. These may include forums organized around common interest. For example, um, so I have a million kids, but one of my daughter's best friends is really into anime drawing. It's a very hot trend right now uh, among young people. You know, you could do an after school club specifically aimed around anime and invite potentially an art teacher from the school to come and actually conduct it in the library instead of in, this, in the school. Um, my daughter loves all things science and just brainstorming how we could interweave the community into the library you know imagine identifying some local organizations perhaps gardening organizations uh schools even businesses that have a shared interest 
you could generate a tremendous interest in a science club in the library by actually pulling on the resources in the community. So teens, teens are always looking for volunteer hours, whether they're applying to programs like the National Honor Society or they're trying to meet graduation requirements that require community service. Um, I think teens are an untapped resource. And the more time they spend in the library, the library, the more time they're going to want to spend in the library. So I think teens are a great, um, a great avenue to involve the community. And then consider establishing a community advisory board. Your community members know what they want and what they need from their library. So by creating a community advisory board that meets maybe quarterly, you're giving community members a voice and you're almost forcing their increased involvement in the library. Um, Billy mentioned workshops. Uh, I, I think workshops are amazing and I'm a big fan of the library. I'm in the library probably twice a week, maybe three times a week to see what they have going on. Now, the sixth way that you can impact student learning outcomes is by establishing partnerships with local schools. And I know that probably everybody on the webinar today is attempting to do that. It's not always easy, but I think if you're vigilant, it will work. Um, you know, budgets are tight for both public schools and school libraries and fostering positive partnerships between both groups. It creates long term relationships and it can enhance student learning through collaboration. Uh, resource exchange. So the library can stock up on current workbooks, videos and other educational material that students can check out to support their in class learning. Um, and another thing is you could also, you'll be in partnership in terms of ordering resources. Maybe instead of ordering something that's irrelevant or competing resources, you're in touch and you have a resource exchange. Um, I think this probably goes without saying, but it's not done often, is just opening the communication channels with schools. So encouraging schools to share their summer reading lists, their assignments, their projects, whether they're science fair projects or history projects. If the schools are sharing those things with the library, you can be ready to support the students that are coming in to complete those assignments. Um, finally, in terms of establishing partnerships, I think field trips are critical. Um, I believe unless you're in the library all the time, you don't know what it has to offer. So asking a local school to schedule a field trip to the library so you can introduce the teachers and the students to the resources, programs, and services that are available, I think that would help strengthen the partnership um, between libraries and local schools. Now, we saved the best for the last, and it's, um, uh, I believe what Janet put in the chat and somebody else put in the chat was, how do, how do we get parents and students to see the library as a learning resource? Well, by, letting people know that you can extend classroom learning outside the bounds of uh, school hours is, is critically important. Um, how, how do we do that? Well, I think there's three critical ways. One is social collaboration. So whether it's online or offline, students constantly work in a state of collaboration. So public libraries can offer opportunities for group learning and support, uh, peer tutoring sessions, information exchange, you know, I think the library is one of the last safe places for students to go um, to collaborate outside of the school walls. The second thing is test prep. And I'm not sure if you have heard it from parents that are coming in or from students or from teachers, but there's a real struggle to find test prep material. And that's one of the reasons why Lumos Learning actually came into existence because nothing existed online to prepare for standardized tests. So you can provide hard copy resources to students, teachers, and parents. You can provide online test prep programs for your state standardized tests. Um, I would just be cautious that whatever you're offering to your patrons, you want to make sure that it's aligned to state standards. Otherwise, it will not be valuable um, to those that are using it. And then I think the last way that libraries can extend classroom learning is by offering um, specific, subject specific resources to improve student achievement. So we know that most students uh, struggle, Not let me not say most, students typically struggle with reading or math or both. And when they struggle with reading or math, that means they're gonna struggle in science and history and almost every other class because if you're not reading on grade level, you could have trouble following instructions or following um, even a test. 
So when a library provides printed resources or electronic resources, or even encourages tutoring sessions at the library, you can positively impact student achievement, um, particularly in reading and math. Thank you, Tammy. Um, as we bring this to the end, and we're gonna unmute your mics in just a minute, our goal from Loomis Learning is to reach over a billion learning interactions with the students through this particular learning. So far, we've got 120,000 students, 11,000 teachers, and over 7,000 7, schools, and we're just getting into the libraries. We've got about 30 libraries thus far. But what I would like all of you people who are on the, the uh, webinar today is to consider adding the Lumos Step Up Database program as a resource. So it is the reason we like it is because it is self-paced. It is student-directed. They can go at their own pace. It's individualized and personalized learning. Learning They get the answers exactly when it happens. And they have uh, study resources for math and English language arts. Tammy just talked about extend classroom learning and ways to, to extend participation. I think that's outstanding. And then uh, it improves the performance on the state assessment. And we've got every state in the United States covered with their assessment. In New Jersey, it is the park. And then the, we give you two practice tests that mirror the state test, questioning it and the timing of it. You know, sometimes when you do one of those state tests, the time gets in the way. We time it in the practice test, so you're kind of used to that. And then the, the EdSearch offers a variety of standards aligned resources. We call this the Google of education because all you have to do is put something in the, in the EdSearch from a, a, a educational standpoint, whether you put in uh, fractions or multiplication, and it'll give you all the resources for that particular subject for workbooks, apps, worksheets, pens, and of course videos, because we have over 700 hours of math videos that, that's free on our, on our a particular line. And then it offers convenient access. A patron gone can go on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You can work from home, school, or library, and all you need is your library card to enter it, whether you're at home or at the library. And then it offers uh, individualized and comprehensive reporting because you get report on student progress that can be printed and shared with the teacher. And then uh, it shows where the progress is and where the lack of progress is, and then it shows ways that they can improve upon their progression. And the libraries, they, the reason some of them like it is because they get monthly reports on the usage from patrons. So it is a, a, a real, we call it return on your investment because it, 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 it allows you to see every month what you're doing about it. And uh, libraries, teachers, and parents can share in the responsibility of tracking student progress and make sure that they're in line for passing that particular test. Now, the LUMA Step Up program is a means of extending classroom learning as well as fostering a partnership between schools and our libraries. Now, as we bring this to the end, we're gonna open up your mics for questions, but if you would like to see a LUMA Step Up, how it can impact your student outcomes on your library, We'll welcome a chance to do this at a no cost, no obligation demonstration that won't take any longer than I think 26.5 minutes as I've done it before. And uh, <laughs> it, it shows you all how to do it. It's so easy to do it. And ladies and gentlemen who are on this webinar, on our Loomis Learning webinar, thank you for your time and attention. And we'd like to open up the mics for any questions that you, might, you may have. And we'd like to, to keep this discussion active and provide additional information as we all move into a new curriculum. We'd also greatly appreciate it if you could join the discussion in our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Loomis Learning Library.